Uh, let's now cross live to a journalist at 2GB in Sydney. Olivia Whitbury joins us live here on Talk TV. Uh, morning to you, Olivia. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us this morning. Hi, Christo. Thanks for having me. So what is the latest, firstly, that you can tell us uh, from your city regarding casualties? Well, firstly, what do we know what happened uh, that happened and, 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 and what is the latest you can tell us on, on casualties and victims? So at this point, there are six confirmed victims. Uh, the majority of them were wom women, one man among them. There's three people in critical condition still in hospital, um, but 12 people in hospital in total. Um, and the offender was also shot dead by an extremely brave police officer at the scene. And for those people who perhaps don't know, what was the train of events? What actually happened in this shopping centre? So yesterday afternoon, around 3pm, uh, Saturday afternoon, uh, the 40-year-old offender, Joel Couchy, entered Bondi Junction Westfield Shopping Centre, which is an extremely busy, extremely popular shopping centre, on a Saturday afternoon, first day of school holidays here in New South Wales. So a lot of people would have been out with their kids, going to the movies, shopping, doing grocery shopping. And at 3 p.m., the offender entered the shopping centre armed with a 30 centimetre knife and went on a rampage where he stabbed multiple people uh, on various levels. It's a five level shopping centre, plus multiple levels of car parks underneath. And he uh, systematically went through and stabbed multiple people before an extremely brave female police officer, Inspector Amy Scott, uh, ran in and um, asked him to drop the weapon. He refused. And then she shot and uh, killed him. Um, however, after she shot him, she immediately commenced CPR to try and save his life and then jumped into action to help CPR on other victims as well. I mean, we're hearing, and again, I know these figures can be a, a, a little sketchy even at this stage, but, but uh, at least 17 people were stabbed. Um, and one of the most heartbreaking stories, I'm sure you can relay this to us, is of um, a mother who is one of the victims who sadly lost her life, but in the final moments of her life, um, managed to save her baby. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so it's a really incredible story of um, bravery and selflessness. Among the victims uh, was the mother that you spoke about, a 38 year old woman named Ashley Good, a first time mother. She was out shopping with her nine month old baby, Harriet, who was in a pram. Uh, the offender ran up to the pram and stabbed the baby horrifically in the stomach and then began stabbing Ashley. Um, but she managed to uh, pick up the baby and she passed it over to two brothers. She begged them to take care of the baby. Um, unfortunately, her wounds were extremely horrific and she later passed away in hospital. She was taken to hospital in critical condition, as was her poor little baby. And the baby has since undergone surgery and is um, doing better. She's still in a stable, a serious but stable condition. But um, the last final moments, I guess, of Ashley's life were understandably devoted to her daughter, Harriet, and just trying to get anyone, strangers to her, to take her little nine-month-old baby and try and save her. It's, it's, you can't get your head around that, can you? Well, I, I, you I really don't, it, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, actually having been a victim of the stab wounds herself and the final yeah. act of her life to pass her baby to someone so that her baby was um, saved. And and uh, thank goodness, firstly, that, that the baby has survived, that Harriet survived and, 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 and is hopefully going to recover from her injuries. But my word, that... that when you were describing it, it sends chills down your spine, doesn't it? It really does. And the, the great bravery of those two men, two brothers who um, quickly took the baby and they have told other media outlets that they use shirts, just anything they could find to try and stop the bleeding on the baby and also to try and help the mother at the same time. But they, you know, took the baby from her and made sure it got the appropriate medical care. And at the same time, that this was all still unfolding. Like, they didn't know if there was only just one attacker or if there are others in the shopping centre. They didn't know where the attacker was or if he could come back. 
um, or even the motivation behind the attack. And it's just one of many stories of bravery and courage that we've seen. There was also another man who used a bollard at the top of an escalator to try and stop the offender gaining access to a floor above. Another amazingly brave individual. Um, but the moment, I mean, was it just, from what we know, completely indiscriminate? Or because I, I'm looking here that we've got sort of four women that were victims, a man aged in his his thirties. They they were the five that that died in the shopping centre. I understand someone else uh, died later. But was it just indiscriminate? From what we know, was it just literally anyone that this person encountered? He was attacking. Yes, so um, police are still trying to find a motivation. Um, we understand this person, this 40-year-old man from Queensland originally, who only moved to Sydney about a month ago, had a history of mental illness. Uh, there are reports that he was diagnosed with schizophrenia as a teenager, and reports are starting to emerge about um, him having a fascination with knives and that sort of thing. But all of this is obviously still to be investigated. Um, you're right, All the majority of the victims were female. Um, three of them have been identified. Another victim was 25-year-old Dawn Singleton, who is the daughter of a man called John Singleton, who is a, um, quite a well-known uh, media personality and media owner um, in Australia. But yes, the majority were female, with the exception of one man in his 30s, uh, who we believe was a security guard. So I guess the motivation there remains to be seen. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned motivation um, and you obviously mentioned the, the context of, of the mental health issues of this person. Um, so police, I understand, they ruled out that they think that this is uh, some sort of ideological attack, some sort of terror related attack. It, 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 is that... Is that right? Is that is that what they've said so far? Yes, they don't believe it was terror related. Um, and the New South Wales Police Commissioner, Karen Webb, has repeatedly said at a couple of media conferences over the last 24 hours that they don't believe it was related to an ideation or an ideology. However, she was asked an interesting question this morning at a media conference about if the majority of the victims were female and this was targeted towards women, at what point that becomes an ideology. She said it's too early to tell at this stage. Yeah, and but I think, sorry, do go on. Remaining, yes, sir, even the remaining victims in hospital, um, those still recovering, three of whom are critical, that the majority of them are women as well. Yeah, so it's a very, very interesting statement to make. And I wonder whether there, well, I, like, I, I lived in Australia for a while. I absolutely adore your country. My heart goes out to 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 Australia at the moment, um, but also I I have absolute confidence in your resilience um, as a nation. But I wonder if knowing your media, whether some of those questions will now still need to be answered about to what extent this will be an ideological attack, and I wonder whether that will be revised going forward. So we have these victims in hospital at the moment. We know. Uh, uh, like you say, that, that that they're getting the best medical care, but but do we know how many there are and 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 the prognosis? Uh, as of this morning, there were twelve people still in hospital, uh, three of them critical, um, and the majority of them, are, or the other ones, are either serious or stable. But we don't know much more than that. And how is Sydney? I mean, again, I, I just alluded to it. Brilliant brilliant, wonderful place, Bondi. I mean, full of all sorts of different people, Bondi. I mean, it's it, it, it's it's sort of the beach resort of Sydney. Would that be a, a fair, fair way of describing it? So a lot of people who are backpackers, a lot of people from different nations, a lot of people who are Australian, love living there. Um, how is Bondi and Sydney and Australia as a whole reacting to this? I think that's a very fair statement. When you think of Australia, I think a lot of people think of Bondi Beach and the sunshine and, you know, the glamorous beaches um, in the eastern suburbs. But, you know, it's been a really shocking and um, unfathomable thing for Sydney. When this started, the news of this started to emerge yesterday, um, I was actually at the races and no one could believe that something like this could happen in Sydney. It's so incongruous that, you know, a mass casualty event like this it just it doesn't happen in Australia we just don't 
We don't even think about that as a risk when you leave the house each day, let alone in a shopping centre where, you know, people take their families every day, every weekend, you know, Bondi Junction is full of families and full of young people just trying to have a good time. It's just not something that's at the forefront of our minds as Australians that an event like this could happen. And it's really sent shockwaves around the country. Um, the Premier, Chris Minns, was actually on the first day of his holiday, he had uh, flown out to Japan, but quickly made a U-turn and didn't even leave the airport, actually came straight back to Australia. And our Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, has also attended the scene a short time ago to lay flowers as well. So we're all in a state of shock. We all, especially in Sydney, people feel that could that could have been us. We could have been there that day. Was this attacker known to the authorities? He was known to police in Queensland, where he was originally from. He's from uh, the town of Toowoomba orig originally. That's where his family still live. Um, I've read that he was variously living in Brisbane and the Gold Coast before moving to Sydney a month ago. He was briefly known to authorities, but apparently not of any um, significant consequence. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to ask this question, but obviously you've been reporting on this, Olivia. How are you? Yes, I mean, I, you know, in comparison to those who were there yesterday and the trauma that the people who were in the shopping centre at the time and the family and loved ones and friends of those who, who have unfortunately lost their lives or are in hospital currently, I mean, I think um, we're all just, our hearts and minds and thoughts are completely with them. We all just want to see the quick recovery, especially of baby Harriet, but of everyone who was impacted by this. And I think we're all, you know, shaken and a little shocked. And a part of us now thinks, well, is Sydney not the safe place we thought it was? Is If something like this could happen at Bondi Junction, where else could it happen? Yeah. So, that's the overwhelming feeling across Sydney today. Well, listen, I, I like I said, I, I adore Sydney. Um, I spent many, many months uh, of my happiest times in your city. I think your country is 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 absolutely amazing. It's resilient, and as tragic and as horrific as this is, and as as important as it is to acknowledge. Um, the victims and I thank you so much as well for naming so many of them because I think in so many of these reports sometimes the names get forgotten um, I am absolutely sure that the that Sydney and the resilience of of people who live there and across Australia I think that that, that you will bounce back eventually for this after a period of acknowledgement and healing I, I really hope so because of what an amazing city and what an awful thing to happen to you. Um, we send our love and condolences, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us uh, this morning.